Right, first thing, unfortunately still ill, so sorry about the voice. Secondly, Merry Christmas. I'm back from the dead to celebrate the Christmas spirit. Oh wait, that, that might have been... Starting off the news this week, a new study published in the journal Nature has revealed that biological activity inside the cells of Christmas trees, as in the ones specifically used for Christmas, increased dramatically during the time of Christmas. While this heavily perplexed the researchers, a tentative conclusion was made. Trees, or perhaps just Christmas trees in particular, are more sentient than we previously believed. This has come as a shock to many, including the Wizengamot. A spokesman earlier today, when approached for interview, said, Go away, we don't talk to muggles. This strange behaviour at the mention of this subject was mirrored by a member of the public we interviewed later on, who went by the name of Sheev, and who said that he had recently fallen a great height, didn't know where he was, and asked us to direct him to the nearest magic unexplained rebirth portal. For those of you who didn't realise, that last story wasn't quite true. At all. I tried searching for a Christmassy science story, but I couldn't really find anything, so there you go. Merry Christmas. In other news, Boeing launched their Starliner capsule this week, with the mission being to rendezvous with the International Space Station, and then return to Earth. This is part of NASA's attempt to have their own launch system to take astronauts to the ISS, which they haven't been able to do since the Space Shuttle. The other part of NASA's quest is SpaceX's Dragon 2 space capsule, which has already successfully carried out tests in space. Boeing's Starliner, however, was not able to complete its mission and did not reach the ISS. According to NASA, this was due to a timing anomaly. It seems that too much fuel was used up, leaving no room for it to reach the ISS. While the Dragon 2 does seem closer to entering service for NASA to buy space on it for their astronauts, both capsules are very late already, as they should have entered service in 2017. Starting off our prehistoric news this week is something that was actually published two weeks ago, but is pretty important and for some reason we missed it before. It's the remarkable discovery of the oldest hunting scene in cave art so far known to science. Located in a limestone cave in Sulawesi, Indonesia, these paintings have been dated to around 44,000 years ago and show several therianthropes, that is part human, part animal figures, hunting wild pigs and small bovids. The researchers therefore recognise that this cave painting represents the oldest record of storytelling with pictures that we know of, as well as being the earliest figurative artwork. Also in the news is the announcement that a new species of the giant spider Mongola arachne, which has been described earlier this year, is in fact a faked fossil and is actually mostly a crayfish specimen. The researchers used fluorescence microscopy to determine this and have therefore reclassified the supposed spider into an already existing crayfish species. And finally, there's the recent publication of a paper which describes the discovery of two femora belonging to late Cretaceous-aged non-Iguanodontian ornithopods in Australia. These bones represent very small baby individuals, the first of their kind known from the country, and the smaller of the bones possibly even belonging to a still embryonic dinosaur. The researchers describe how the very low body masses would have restricted small ornithopods from undergoing long migrations, and that therefore these new fossils are evidence that these animals were breeding in high latitudes at this time and place in the Cretaceous. Thank you very much for listening in this week. Sorry about the voice. It was actually worse than I thought it would be, but um, hey-ho. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Have a really, really wonderful Christmas, and we'll see you on Sunday.